Welcome to the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. I am your host, Tracy Bloom, and this is Books, Kids, and Creations. I feature people who inspire and uplift future generations with their work. And today we are here in person, which is such a special treat, with Kathy Wade. She is the CEO and co-founder of Learning Through Art, Books Alive, and also a very accomplished jazz singer. Well, Kathy, thank you. thank you for having me here. Thank you for being here. We just love opening up the house and welcoming people in. Yes, well, um, this is actually not my first visit to the yeah. office, and um, I'm always astounded by everything that you are always creating and <laughs> manifesting here with your work. Yeah. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on you as a person, mm -hmm. and um, I saw your first album was called You Got the Magic. Yeah. And I went, you have <laughs> the magic. You are everything you, you are creating is just <laughs> magic. I mean, how did you, um, I guess I want to start from when you were younger. How did you start in the world of music? Well, um, that's a good question. There are six of us. I have five, five siblings and both my parents, I bring this up because part of growing up was that you had to acquire a love for jazz. Both of my parents were jazz officiados. My mother loved vocalists, my father loved instrumentalists. So depending on who kept me on their off day determined what I was hearing. So mm -hmm. it was either Charlie Parker or Billie Holiday, one of the two. And that's just a sample of the many people that, uh, I have a Miles Davis uh, poster in my office um, because that's that was my legacy, right? So it all got started then, um, being introduced to jazz. Um, first album I ever learned back to back was, believe it or not, um, Porgy and Bess, the play, because there was so much in it mus musically that I loved. But it started there. My mom made sure that we were always exposed to the arts. My grandmother, I, would just, I started doing the opera at a very young age when I used to do summer opera at the Cincinnati Zoo. I'm dating myself now. But uh, <laughs> we used to go, and I used to pretend that I was the opera singer. This all started with pretense for me. Even growing up, I would run down to the basement and pretend I was doing the commercials, advertising <laughs> the washer, you know, practicing. And, so it, it's pretend, which is why pretense is so important as we grow up. You know? And when you found your voice mm -hmm. with singing, was it just a natural thing or did you take lessons? No, you know what's interesting, because I was growing up on jazz, um, my parents would have parties, cookouts, and because we had the big house and backyard and all that, and that people would come by. And invariably, I can remember this, I always ended up singing. And I don't remember the story, but my mother tells me, um, I remember the day I met the guy who wrote half of my first CD, uh, You Got the Magic. And she, they, they, my brother, my, I have a brother that's a comedian who's actually featured in Books of Life for Kids, Virtual Adventures episodes. But he came over, his name is uh, Ted McConnell. He came over, they were having a party, Ted bought his band. My mother walks out and says, my daughter sings, you need to hear her. Once Mom's again, awesome. mother knows, right? <laughs> I sing, we end up working together, I got this CD, it's the only one I've actually produced, and it's still selling around the world. It's just, it's the most amazing thing, great music. Yeah. And literally that relationship then has now led to the title song of our Virtual Adventures episodes. Who says you can't do that? Ted wrote that, and I sing it, and it's just, it's, it's fun. Full circle. It's you know, fun. Mom knows best. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that was probably the part that, that pulled the arts out, mm -hmm. you know, just having somebody knowing something that we can direct you. I yeah. think that's always important, too, you know. And then you went on to, you've opened for Kenny G. I have. That was, Whitney. Yeah. That was my, Kenny G was my very first national act that I opened for. And um, actually, that's probably not true. I probably did Ramsey Lewis before that. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> um, I ended up, <laughs> I did my, I, I ended up going to, this is CCM. I went to graduate school at the College Conservatory of Music and got a master's in arts administration thinking that arts administration would, would prepare me to be a, a much m more knowledgeable and business-like artist. And then you built Learning Thank Through art. art. Is that in 1992? 92. Okay, so, 92. True story. <laughs> 
my late husband had the idea of doing this. When we married, um, I was doing programs in the schools, and he thought it was very nice and quite noble and all that, but he thought that we should start a 501c3. He had already been involved in starting another one. We should start a 501c3, and um, because I came home one day complaining that at the time, rap music was new. That shows you how long I've been doing this, right? <laughs> and <laughs> that scratch noise. Yeah. Kids thought that that was an instrument. And I came home one day just screaming. Oh my God, they think that thing is an instrument. Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he was, he was so quiet about everything. And he said, well, you know, we are incorporated as a 501c3. You could get a grant and expand your program and teach children. Mm -hmm. Further teach them. And I said, oh. I did the same. That's what I said. Oh, you're right. I, did. <laughs> I mean, my hesitancy and even... When he said, you know, let's start the 501c3, in my head I'm thinking, I just got out of grad school. I right. had to do one of those to get out of grad school. I'm not doing another one. If right. you get us incorporated, great. I'll run the company. But at the same time, we released my CD, and it was doing really well in Europe, and, da -da -da, and I'm having a great time. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I run the company right, right. now. Right, right. Long story short, we the moment happens about the kids and the music and not them not knowing and me expanding. I went for our first grant. We, um, I applied to Jurgens Foundation. I had a girlfriend in the Junior League who was a grants writer, and I said, could you help me get this done? This was my first time going after something like this. Yeah. And we asked for eight. We got five, and now we're 31 years old. Wow. Yeah. And, and uh, your program has reached millions? Yes. In the 31 years, we've been very lucky. Um, because we have Books Alive for Kids, of course. And it's interesting how all the programs, one program led to the other program. Yeah. So it all started because we were doing edutainment, which is a real thing now. <laughs> Who knew then? <laughs> but I've been at this long enough, I've seen the changes in the vernacular. Right. We were doing edutainment and uh, presenting lecture performances. And Black mm -hmm. Anthology of Music was one of the first program that I did. Mm -hmm. um, so building from that stage to creating a second program. I was out on tour with Playhouse in the Park, their education division for two years. The first year they called me, they wanted me to take Black Anthology of Music out. The second year they called and said, hey, do you have another program? I didn't, but I said that I did. And I created this show. It's going down on the streets of Cincinnati and there was a kid standing out on the sidewalk screaming words that a child should never say to an adult in a window. And it hit me, I'm going to do a show about respect. And that was the second show, Through uh -huh. Those Common Bonds. Respect, because we, art is our most common bond. We use that art to get you to understand how respect plays into every part of your life and your community. So that became um, um, Through Those Common Bonds. There's a song in there called The Hood is Bigger Than You Think, and we created The Hood is Bigger Than You Think summer tour from that song. Oh. It talks about understanding that we must respect our planet, our people, our neighbors, our family, all of that because those are our neighbors, which makes them family, yeah. right? So that uh, led to us developing then, breaking each one of the shows that we produced in the Hood is Bigger Than You Think tour. So we had Crown Jewels of Jazz, which was our signature fundraiser, and now it is our signature series every summer, where we celebrate primarily women in jazz, but we celebrate the idiom of jazz, the, yeah. the, the music of jazz, right? Uh, we had the Kids Cultures Critters. It was Kids Cultures and Crafts Festival. Yeah. It is now the Kids Cultures Critters and Crafts Festival because we do it in partnership with the zoo. Yay! This will be our 15th year. We've been off for three years due to COVID, so we're going back into there June 21st. And what does that look like? That is an incredible day where you really get to see the building of bridges, breaking down barriers, and bringing neighbors and neighborhoods together to celebrate the mosaic beauty. We will feature our world of possibilities mm -hmm. as you walk into the zoo on the Vine Street Plaza. And it is an it is intentionally designed for you to recognize you might be a purple person who likes purple music and you'll get to see the pink people who like the pink music and you'll get to hear that and see them and that's your neighbor. Yeah. All we are here to do is to be the conduit for the introduction. Once you've been introduced, you can never say that you don't know a purple person or a pink person. I love it. And it also should give you the opportunity and the impetus to have a conversation 
We can only be your point of introduction. The action is on you. And you bring in kids, and we you bring, bring in the crafts, and bring it's in wonderful. Everybody. Yeah. The focus of utilizing, celebrating cultures, we'll be representing, we're going to focus on 11 different cultures this year, countries this year. Yeah. You get a passport, you visit each one, we stamp it, when you get to the end, you come to our table, and you get to go into the treasure chest and take a book out and take it all. Oh. I'd like to donate a book to that. That'd be great. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So, you know, that's, we add that, we have roving musicians, we have a main stage with performers on it, we try to make sure that we have performers representing every kind of culture and art that there is out there, performing art, preferably, preferably, but but then we have roving musicians, and then we have a company here, um, circus company here, and we hire still walkers and jugglers and magicians, so that for the day, you have this immersive, interactive experience where you're not only celebrating and taking in the globe, but yeah. understanding that you're not confined to where you work. You're not confined yeah. to where you play. You're not confined to where you pray. The world is your, it's your neighborhood. And even beyond the world, when you look at us going into space and mm-hmm. going back and building colonies on the moon, those folks are still your neighbor. <laughs> We're all here together, right? Yeah. So, being able to, to break off those three pieces and they now are standalone products has yeah. been very gratifying. The big change came though 25 years ago because Books of Life and Kids is approximately 25, 26 years old now. Is That's when arts integration came into play. And you had to, because arts was being pulled out of schools. Mm. And yeah. the new buzzword was arts integration education. <laughs> And you had to figure out how you take art and apply it to math, science, all of the topics in the classroom. And I thought to myself at the time, I think this is crazy. You must teach art because art is strong enough by itself. It is, yeah. But if that's the only way I'm going to be able to continue to play and and make sure that we are impacting kids as much as we can, and then ultimately families, let me figure out a topic that going to be of interest to me. Yeah. I love to read, and I could not figure out, why would somebody want to read? That is so bizarre. Well, as it turns out, I said to my late husband's niece, who was teaching special ed in CPS at the time, I want to take books, and I want to make them walk on water, and I want to make them fly, and I want, I want kids to really want to jump on that book and fly with them. What curriculum topic would that fall under? And she said, language arts, and I said, I'm in. Yeah. And that started 26 years ago. I sat down with a group of library, uh, the, ch- the woman who was actually over the children's library, library at uh, C- Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library. Uh, the woman who's now my board member, she was a performing artist, teaching artist at the time. A lot of other teachers, retired, reading specialists, we all sat down in someone's kitchen. and I said, this is what I want to do. How does this sound? What do you think? Yeah. And we built from there. And so here we are now yeah. producing. We have Books of Life for Kids, which is where we make books come alive through sight, sound, and touch. You read a book, you make a craft, and then there's a show. The three elements give you multiple modalities to touch children wherever they are. Yeah. And what we have found over the years is that if we didn't get you from reading the book, and exploring the vocabulary, which we now provide in four different languages. Amazing. Um, and we didn't get you at how we tied a craft to that book. And for some reason, if we didn't get you with the craft, you bring a show in, and by that time, I got you. Because <laughs> then you're like, boy, that, that book did all of that. Yeah, that book did all of that. Right. You can do that, too. And your latest one was Viva Frida? Viva Frida. That's yes. our latest production. And Amazing. we just did our very first um, screening at the Esquire Theater here in Cincinnati. Um, it was the most interesting and exciting Saturday. We did two showings. Yeah. And just to see the reaction of kids in the audience yeah. watching this. Because our main character is a purple puppet by the name of Paige Turner. Um, who does all of these wonderful adventures all around literacy and the things that she can explore within her community and showing you that you can explore that too. 
for your future plans, for your your life work, what do you imagine for, I mean, I know you, you weren't imagining a lot of the things that came, right. but what are your, what are your goals for your program and what do you really want to see happen? Well, before I leave the planet <laughs> <laughs> um, and take, you know, the sunset rest, resting, uh, first of all, I probably don't see myself ever, like, leaving it because when you're working in the creative space and you're really letting it go, you can be creative till the day you leave the planet. Right. So, you know, there's no time limit. But goal-wise for me, I say this jokingly, and I even said this jokingly to you, world domination. <laughs> you know, Paige Turner must have world domination on literacy and not world domination that we can't enjoy and share it with other people. That's the whole point. I just have this Hooking visual over. of your puppet yes. taking over the taking world, over world, world domination. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's, it's, um, it's, if we had it, the world would be reading. Yes. And when I say world domination with Paige, I just want Paige to be that conduit that people are comfortable in knowing they can pick that book up and they've got a friend they can turn in. We stream. Streaming is available all over the world. Yeah. One of the things we learned at the World Literacy Summit is that there's a vast portion of the world that only gets their news and everything through their phones. Fast. Mm -hmm. They're not reading, but this is where we can get to them. Right. Because we now have the Books of Life for Kids app. Right. So... And the, the productions, the streaming episodes that we produce, become vignettes and conversations within the app. So you always feel, that's why I'm saying world domination on page, you always feel like you're talking to Paige, because Paige yeah. is always saying, we try to pace the show and write the show so that we can do that. And you would feel like it's a conversation with your friend about reading. Yeah. You don't even know you're reading, because it's Paige. Right. Paige says it's okay. <laughs> I think there's a point where you get in your life where things happen and you didn't think that the Emmys being at Oxford University and talking about this program, a program that I never thought I'd have because I didn't really want to do a nonprofit anyway. Right. So who am I to turn that down? Right. right. Um, and then the, the recognition that people are, are, are giving it, the validation at the World Summit, and then being recognized as the 2023 um, Arts Administrator for the State of Ohio as one of the Ohio Arts, Ohio Governors Awards for the Arts uh, recipients. Such a big deal. It is a big deal, and, yeah. and I try to downplay that, <laughs> but I was at a meeting the other day, and I heard myself say it, and I got up and clapped. Yeah. I got up and clapped. Yes. I'm thinking, it's been 31 years. You need yes, to get clap up and for clap. yourself. You need to. <laughs> you did it. Nonprofit world, 31 years is not easy. <laughs> yeah. You know, no matter how clever you are. Right. No matter how. I mean, we are so fortunate to have partners who believe in the mission and, more importantly, believe in our work. We recently wanted to participate in a program here in Cincinnati and we did not make it. Oh. Um, ended up having a conversation with the people and saying, well, why? Yeah. And being told, bottom line, you had the highest score. Your program got the highest score, but unfortunately, you wanted to train as opposed to pr produce, prevent, you know, pr pr uh, presenting the program as well. Huh. Budget-wise, it would have been very difficult to make that leap. But... Good to know. Yeah, at least you We're found number out. one. Yeah, at least okay. you asked. When you ask about that goal, the goal is to be able to get people to see that it does work. And it's not hard. It's not hard. But if we do it collectively as a family, as a community, as a country, as a city, as a school, just as an individual, Reading is the most fundamental thing we have to be able to do. If you can read, you can you can absolutely succeed. Right. Well, I'm just in awe of you and oh, all that you do, you. and I'm so thankful for having you here today. Thank you. Um, we Thanks will be coming. posting links to okay. uh, the Learning Through Art website and also oh. for Books Alive. Um, please check out. Learning Through Art and Books Alive. It is a fantastic program. It is, I mean, you can just 
go down a rabbit hole with content there with yeah. um, just crafts and yes. learning material yes. and videos. Study it's guides. Everything study guides. Yeah. Yes, it's amazing. So thank you so much. Thank Kathy. you.